Hello, hello, and welcome to another part of the Scrum Fundamentals series. And we just saw how our tightness and different areas and different parts can help us to break the clumps. But there are another areas or another modifications that can help us also to break the clumps. On this case, we will look how the other scales bends, cuts, and basically the rest of the modifiers or attributes can help us to break our clumps. So we go back to the basic shape where we have a clump like this and we throw it on basically a different curve, right? Which one is it? This one. So that's our main clump, right? This is our main shape. This is how it looks with the hair. And now let's start applying. So this one will be us applying a little bit of a scale. So this one will be scale. The scale, remember, that the scale it's different than the cut because the scale will keep the shape or increase the shape whilst the cut will cut the shape short instead of getting the full shape right so we will start with the shape normally we try not to reduce the shape that much but we can increase it once we have, we have two ways to increase. We have the length increase or the increment and the scale. So if we increase the scale, we can increase the whole scale. But normally by doing this, we will break the shape in a way like that. Also, we can have a random scale that is the normal way to do it. So half of the hairs are shorter and the other half are larger. So the effect of the scale will look something like this. Then we have, I did it on the same, well, it doesn't matter. We have the increment. The increment, contrary to the scale, so let's just get a better color. Or yeah, the increment, contrary to the scale, will take the shapes and increase it accordingly to the maximum length. The problem with this is that if we have one hair that is coming in this direction and one hair that is coming to that direction, we will have crease crossing. So it's tricky to balance out how much do we want to shape the hair and to scale inside of the actual hairs, inside of a clump. Because if we have a shape that does like this and we increment and re-increase the length, we can have this effect. It's good if we increase the length by preserving the shape because then this will be an increase of the length of the actual guide of the clump affecting the length of the main hairs. So there are different ways to increment, but this one will break something like this. Then we have the cut. So these are the three, three main ways to break with length. So the cut will have a shorter amount of hairs and the clump will not reach. So that will break our actual shape of the clump. So if I remove my greens, so let me just redraw this. So this will be the cut. This will be the increment. This will be the scale. And this will be the default one. So if I remove all of them, so you can see the difference. This is 
normal or default. This is a scale. This is increment. And this is cut. And all of them has this possible shape, right? So let's see on the actual thumbs how this one will look. So let's add, instead of adding my freeze, that is the one that I have there, let's add a length. So let's start adding this length just to my first guide curve. So I have it here. And let's add a multiply so I can increase or decrease. But remember that I'm adding the same shape. And this is a scale, not a cut. So if I have a noise, it will scale with that shape. So if I increase the length, it will basically increase and decrease the shape of my clump normally. So this will have no real effect on breaking the big clump. But the moment that we are this to the small clumps, and we scale them, you can see how this scale factor actually is working like the cut. But if we go outwards, it's working like an extend or increment. And the effect that we will have here, let's bring the clump in. So we have full clumps. You can see it there. So this will bring a full effect and break my main shapes. Let me make it super tight so you can see it full tightness. And this is what the effect of the scale factor will do. If we shorten it up, you can see how my clump breaks in a different way. And if I increase it, it will break out our words. That was the one that we saw here. And the mix is the one that we saw there. For the actual scale with the normals, I suppose to get this effect in Houdini, let me see if I can get it. No, because this one will reach the maximum length. Will be on a scale, maybe. Yeah, so you can see the difference between cut or extent and a scale, where the hairs actually are scaling properly with the main shape. So if we had any noise, it will be conserved and this one in cut or extent will work on the other way. So that's basically the main difference of these two, that we will have a cut or we will have an extent there. And this is just basically the normal attributes and we can actually go and make them inwards. I didn't knew that, that's risky. But we can. Uh, remember that these are basically hairs that, well, they are curves. Uh, not hairs, really. So if we go here and we add an add by a scale with a random, Why is it not doing anything? No, oh, because I didn't have the length. So if we add something like this, and we try to add it and see the result, we can see how our clump is completely broken because of the shape that we are adding to our actual clump. Even if we go to clump extent, that will follow better the main shape of our clump we will have a pretty bad, let me just change this to multiply. So I can have one as a main value, so 0.5 to 1.5. It's good to balance them out always. So if your value is one, 
to try to put like 0.8 and 1.2. So you always keep them as delete. As balanced as you can to zero. So if I have, if my value is one, then I put 0.8 and 1.2. So the difference here is 0.2 and the difference here is 0.2. So we balance them out from root to bottom, and you can see that they have, or try to keep a better balance between them. If I, by the contrary, reduce this a lot, we will have a break on the shape, as you can see there. Now, what happens then, if I add the same effect to the strands? In the case of the strands, let me just put this one here. We will have the exactly same or the exact same final effect, but it will break all the clumps. So if we add a scale, you can see that we lose the clump shape and we explode outwards once we have the main shape. But it's basically what I was checking and seeing. And if for this, we reduce these clumps. So you can see that if we reduce how close they are, so instead of having this shape, that what we'll do when we extend is doing this, we have a shape more like this. When they extend, they will do something more like this because they continue the actual shape. So you can see that one there. And if we do something like this change and uh, on the here we, re we reduce this we can see it properly so you can see here the moment that we remove this main effect you can see how on the small clumps if I reduce the tightness the effect of the extent that we're adding on the hair let me extend this here it will get increment to the final point that we are adding. So you can see there, and uh, if we increment the length, you can see how it starts to get scaled. But if we use an extent, you can see there the big difference between the scale that will show us the full shape. Look, you can see that these ones are the small ones there. And once we make it really big, it goes here, goes here, goes here, and goes crazy. So you can see it there. You can see how it goes crazy, but keeps the same shape. But if we use an extent, it will follow the same path. That's the difference between them and how you can control them. And you can see how the length can also help to break the clumps. So it's important to differentiate that and how this can break the clumps in different ways. The first one, the noise, as we saw before, can help to break the clumps in a more natural way, but something like this can also help us to break the clumps in a non-standard way. This one is quite quite extreme, so we want something a little bit simpler here. And this one here, let's just try to get a cut and extend, that's fine. Let's get a cold threshold. So something like this should do. And you can see now the difference of how this can be broken just by adding a length. This is quite defined and we can break them. And if we want, we can define this a little bit more. Something like this. You can see the clumps there and how we're breaking and kind of getting back to what we have at the start because we are breaking this shape. But as we're extending, we kind of get back, but with a more natural breakup. So that's the important part, the natural breakup that you can get from the different ways that you can break your clumps. 
and if on top of that you add a actual phrase then you can break your clumps or add some kind of phrase or strays and then you can control how tight it is with your main clump then you can control how sparse it gets so you can see through a bit but it's really sharp here and you can add some nice flyaways later with a noise to break some of this shape and then you will have a big shape with a real nice breakup fussy tips and then a halo so that's the different ways that you can break with a non-standard uh, note or cup or modifier you can do this with the cut and you can do this with the length in Xgen 2 remember that we're doing it here just because it's easier to visualize one and the other faster but you can add a length so a length a run length uh, a equals rand 0, 0,1 on length or 0 0.2 on the length on or or the cut of the clumps and you can get this and then something like this on the length to increase it and decrease it and basically that's the same effect on action so you can do it many ways for this I hope you like it this is an odd way to do it but it works a lot I normally use it a lot for fuzzy characters because the length breakup helps to get these kind of doubles effects and you know what let me try to find one ref that will help to understand how this gets and how this affects and the visual effect that it has I think that the best ref that we can take for this are the kittens paws or the kittens in general they're super fluffy but you can see that the clumps do exist you can see this really tight clump but also you can see how fluffy it is so there are some hairs that just extend from it so you can just extend some of the hairs out of the clumps so you can keep the shape you can see how there this one is coming this way and that one is coming that way and that's how these effects get done you can see the clump here one two three four so that clump there will be a clump of four hairs so one two three and there is one that is a stray so four so that's that clump if you look at that there actually one is longer so it's like one like this two like that three and four that's how that clump is made you can see it there and this one comes a little bit this so that's a length increase in just one of the hairs a cut on the other ones and a fly away so a noise from the root on the third one so that's basically different ways that are not destroying the shape because if we remove the envelope remember that the shape will be destroyed and we will have a square these ones are not a square these ones are triangles so we need a full shape maybe even a little bit tighter here and then we increase one which has high length and then we add a fly away to the other one so we add a frizz that goes away and then we add a shorten and lighten and then we have that breakup on the main clump that give us this nice amount of detail. I hope you like it and see you on the next one.